Guys, I have lost my mind. <laughs> I've officially lost my mind. <laughs> I mean, I could barely sleep because I knew this would be in the mail today and I just couldn't wait to show you my latest purchase. What I think will be my last watercolor purchase in a very, very long while because it's just outrageous. So, are you ready? Because I am here to show you this. Ever seen it before? This is my Schmincke Horridum Aquarel 54 pan set. 54. In this awesome box are 54 Schmincke Horridum watercolor pens. Well, half pens. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know it, this is the professional grade Schmincke paint. 54 of them. I believe they have like 140 or 139 different colors. But come on, 54 is a dream. My dream. <laughs> Hopefully yours too. So let's unbox and swatch this beauty and see where it takes us. I expect it to be someplace really, really magical. Now, this is a really unusual set. It's a card box, not a metal tin, and the only other card box watercolor set I have is the Kuretaki Gansai Tambi, and I guess it looks better than this one. I mean, this is one white cardboard box, no frills, nothing too fancy about it, even though this did cost me a lot of money. Not as much as I expected, though. It was cheaper than the 48 metal tin sets, maybe because of the card box. You know, I don't even know where this came from, to be honest, because I haven't seen this anywhere else. Not on YouTube, not on shops, which is kind of bizarre. <laughs> so I bought these off Amazon Spain from the Schminke shop and they had like five available. Well, it's for now. <laughs> so maybe this is a special edition. I have no idea. And if you know, please leave me a comment letting me know, okay? I would love to know what I have here. So yeah, here are all the colors I'm getting, all the numbers, some of these are names I've never heard before, but I will say I am not a Schmincke Horridum specialist. I know the Academy range pretty well, I have them all, but this one is kind of new to me. Artist pigments in the highest possible concentration, each color has its own individually optimized formula, pans poured four times in liquid state, fully reusable paint when dried on a palette, high control of paint flow. Finest artist watercolors. Okay, now all I've done so far is taken the box out of the package and taken the plastic out of the box. And yes, this came fully packaged, okay? People from Windsor and Newton, pay attention. This is how you package <laughs> a watercolor set. It was not like in my last video where the box just came all open and no protection and the metal tin was scraped, all that. So, are we ready? Let's, let's open this. Ugh. This, ooh, this is what we get. Oh, so pretty. <laughs> I love them just the way they are. If I could keep them like this, I would, but I really want to use them. <laughs> now, I am also very, very curious to know what's in here. You know, this middle section right here, I couldn't find a single photo that told me what this was. Maybe a palette? Let's find out. I feel like a kid on Christmas morning, to be honest. Um, Let's try maybe. Okay. Um, let's take a little. Okay, that's disappointing. Let's see if I can show you without. So, what's in here is absolutely nothing. It's empty, guys. It's just, uh, I don't know, a separator? Why would they do this? I mean, come on. Couldn't they just make a tinier box? without all this. I really thought there was something in here. <laughs> was there supposed to be something in here that didn't come? Because <laughs> this makes no sense, guys. Yeah, it's empty. It's completely empty. Bah, bah, bah. Okay, but there's still plenty of fun to be had. Let's unpack these beauties while we chat. I'm going to show you the first ones because I just love the sound of those packs being open. You know, a little bit of RSMR, if you will. <laughs> It's relaxing and exciting at the same time. I don't know what it is, it just does good things to me. <laughs> it's like unwrapping a whole lot of gifts. But doing all of these is just going to take a while, so I'll just fast forward it after a bit, okay? Okay, so first one, lemon yellow, no plastic inside. So again, people from Windsor and Newton take note. This is how you package watercolor without damaging the environment much. And here we go. Lemon yellow. Uh, yeah, I hope I don't get these mixed up. I have no idea if these fall, how I'm supposed to 
These don't go in there, do they? I don't think so. Yeah, I have no idea how I'm supposed to identify these, if they fall or something like that. Maybe this tells me the number. I'll have to check with the others. 14, 215. Yeah, it's 215 for sure. Let's see if the others match. Let's see, this one is Cadmium Yellow Light. Cadmium Gelb Hell. <laughs> Not gonna read all of these in German, I don't think, although it's pretty funny to hear it. Pretty, pretty yellow. So this is 224. Yeah, 224, okay. Now I'm, <laughs> I'm already easy, now I can identify them easily. Okay, so this one is pure yellow. I can tell you right now, this has a lot of yellows on this collection. Will this work? 216, oh. I mean, how will I, how am I supposed to know what I've got here? If these all fall off, I'll be in trouble. Uh, this is transparent yellow, lazur gelb, okay. So here's the thing, this is my first time ever trying the Schmincke Horedam range. Look at this. <laughs> okay, this one, I don't know what this one is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this isn't yellow at all. This isn't, this doesn't look transparent yellow. Well, but we know how this goes, right? The colors when dried rarely correspond to the color when it's activated. So let's hope this is indeed transparent yellow. So chromium yellow hue deep. So as I was saying, this is my first time trying the Schmincke Horadam range. I've been using the Academy range since like March, since I was gifted a set. And I have to say, I love those, absolutely love those. So I fully expect this range to be even more awesome. <laughs> Okay, 2.13, we're getting into the oranges, I guess. Turner's yellow. And this is a German brand. I hear it's quite expensive in the US, but not so much in Europe, thankfully. Um, these are actually made in Germany, not like many of the other brands who make their paints in China or elsewhere. You know, these are really made in Germany which I guess only helps make them more expensive. 222, two, two. do we have a 222? Two, two, two? Yes, orange. These are, however, my second professional grade watercolors in a week though. What is going on around here? I have no idea. <laughs> because, you know, I loved the Windsor & Newton set much more than I expected. I had no expectations really, uh, but I'm a schmink girl. So my expectations for this one are really, really, really high. <laughs> And let me tell you exactly how high they are. I expect vibrancy, but also subtlety. I expect them to re-wet and flow and blend like a dream. <laughs> I just expect these watercolor paints to become my fast favorites the minute I try them. So uh, no pressure. <laughs> Geranium red. We're halfway there and already we have some cracked, some bubblies, some that were clearly <laughs> poured, some that were, you know, packaged before they were dry. Oh, can't wait to try this, is all I can tell you. Let's keep going. I am a little concerned about the fact that without the paper, these are really loose. I will have to get some place to put these in like some sort of metal tin and then maybe add magnet or something because these, if they fall off, they're going to be a lot of trouble to get back in the same order. So we'll see. Yeah, probably we'll be looking for a metal tin. Let's keep going with our Helio Cerulean.
This is probably the color I am most um, curious about. It looks to be, I love gray blues, <laughs> indigos and such. And this one looks to be really light, lighter than indigo. No indigo here actually, <laughs> lighter than indigo, but um, still, ooh, look at that. You know, if this color when activated looks anything like this, I will be very pleased and this will be my favorite color. I can tell you right now. Cobalt turquoise. And this was cobalt green turquoise, by the way. And this is cobalt turquoise. Ooh, look at that. Lovely. These two, mm, love them. Phalo green, my first phalo. <laughs> well, I have a couple of phalos over here but I uh, never had one in any other of my sets. Last row guys, almost there, and it's been over 20 minutes. <laughs> 20 minutes, it did take longer because I have to write down most of the pen numbers because this printing is not good. Um, some are cut, others are just big mush. I don't know what they did here, but um, yeah. So this is ivory black. We have a couple of blacks. Don't know what I'm going to do with so many blacks. I rarely use black. <laughs> this 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 one's different. Okay. Oh, completely different. Uh, which number is this? Hematite black. Seven, eight, nine. This looks gray, okay. Perlene green. We're back to the greens. And then we go back to black. I don't know what these guys were thinking, but... Oh, okay, now I do. <laughs> Why would they call this? Well, I'm not sure what kind of green this one is, but it is among the black. It looks totally black and I can't wait to find out. Lamp black. So many blacks, four blacks. Well, this one kind of looks gray, but we'll see. It's still called black. Now we have a white and these three, I think are metallic maybe. I'm seeing silver, gold and brilliant opera rose. Brilliant, well, we'll see. Um, this one is silver, never had a silver. Yeah, definitely. Ooh. Sparkly, can you see? So silver, gold. So we have three metallics right here. Gold, a little gold here, and brilliant opera rose. Yeah. I'm not very into metallics. Well, I've done a couple of videos that were gorgeous, but it's not something I use every day. Ooh, this doesn't look, this doesn't look metallic at all. Why is it here? Well, I guess we have to try it. <laughs> My immediate thoughts is the packaging could have been a lot better. This is really bumming me out. Um, yeah, we have lots of different textures here to try some. Can't wait to try these. Um, I'm thinking I'll have to find a solution for these pans because, you know, rewetting these paints using water like I'm about to do in a card box isn't going to work. Not really. Just for today, but in the long run, there is no way. Plus, you know, the fact that um, these didn't came with tags, I'm not very impressed with their packaging, I have to say. Very, ooh, look at that. They are absorbing like crazy. Very impressed with the paints, I think. I think I'll be impressed with the paint. Not so sure about this packaging, but I think I got a pretty nifty price for these 52, considering how much um, Schminke usually goes for. So yeah, as for my swatch card, here it is. This big one, it will require a lot of concentration to make sure uh, I don't mess this up and put paint where it shouldn't. I already messed this up with the numbers. <sighs> Let's see, shall we? <laughs> and I do realize this was a bit extravagant and it's not, like, it's not like I can say I'll be using only these from now on. I mean, these are expensive. Imagine trying things out and making mistakes with this paint. You know, these are 
but four euros each i can't do that i would be so nervous all the time so here's lemon yellow here's cadmium yellow light so what i like to do is i paint it a little bit then i go back for some water and i just spread this all out and see how it goes pure yellow oh god i can tell you right now just by swatching how good these are they are creamy they are super easy to activate they are I can tell you right now, they will be a dream to paint with. I'm very, very happy, very, very excited about these. Okay, let's try transparent yellow. This strange looking thing right here. Okay. You know, this is the biggest proof I can give you that you really need to swatch your watercolors because sometimes that's the only way you can know exactly what you're getting. Okay, so chromium yellow hue deep. Yeah, this is pretty much going into the orange territory by now. Turner's yellow is next. And this looks like Naple yellow from the Academy range. Yeah, I'll probably end up doing a video comparing the two. Sounds like something that I'd like to do. Hopefully it's something you'd like to see too. <laughs> okay, so yellow, orange. I like this one. See, this is not the color I imagine would come out from that pan. I would imagine a must, much rustier tone. Yeah. Chromium, orange hue. That's a nice orange. There we go. Transparent orange. The color you would think this is more of a red. But as you activate it and try it on, it's totally orange. Nothing red about it. Okay, first row is done. Let's go to the red. Satin red. It's a pretty one, kind of between an orange and a red. Geranium red, this looks pretty red. Look at that. This is a red red, really big one. Cadmium red light. Those are kind of similar, right? Similar, maybe this one is a bit lighter. Well, it is light, then that's what they said, right? Scarlet red. Oh, this is going on the pinks. I thought this would be the redder of them all, but it's not. Never judge a color by its dry pen. <laughs> even as I'm swatching, I haven't even painted with these yet, and I can already tell the difference. They are so creamy, so packed full of pigment. Uh, it's just a completely different beast and if I'm honest I was kind of afraid I wouldn't be able to tell the difference because you know I'm not the most experienced watercolor artist yet but yeah you can definitely tell the difference so Bordeaux over here I need a little bit of a disclaimer here guys, which is no one really needs 54 watercolor paints Okay, particularly if you're not a professional But I guess even then, you know, odds are you like certain colors better than others Or you have a certain style of painting that usually means you're more into certain colors and less into others Plus, you know, there's color mixing 54 gives you a whole lot of options that you probably won't use much once you're done with the swatching. So yeah, while this is impressive and I'm stoked I did this crazy thing and bought them and I hope you're enjoying watching this video a lot, but don't feel frustrated in any way if you can't get a similar set, okay? A smaller set will be more than enough. For me, 24 colors is the perfect amount. And at the same time, I hear a lot of people say how intimidated and overwhelmed they get when they get a bigger set. And I consider 24 a bigger set. 
don't. Don't feel that way. You know, the options are there to help you, to save you the trouble of having to know how to color mix when you're trying to learn so much stuff at the same time. So, you know, just give them a try. Have some fun. <laughs> now, the swatch cards really help with that because looking at the pans won't help much. Like I said, they'll look much darker than the real color and that's actually a very good sign your paints are really good. Back to swatching. <laughs> Magenta. Nice little pinky. Beryllium violet. Ooh, this is beautiful. I don't know how to say the word. Perillin. Perillin. Guys, help me out with this. You know I struggle with the words. Manganese violet. Ooh, this one's promising. Okay. A little bit more activating. Yeah. This one looks very, very good. Cobalt violet hue. Now, I have no trouble with hues. I don't mind them at all. Some of the prettier colors are hues. They work very, very good. This is a really bright one. Okay. Delft blue. We're into the blues now. Ooh, that's dark. That's dark and pretty, guys. I've washed my brush. Didn't care. Just kept doing its own thing. The water was really buckling down on this. Look at that one. It's already pulling where it shouldn't. Yeah, I've been working with blocks so much these last few days, I totally forget that this is what happens. So now French Ultramarine. That's a pretty blue. And it just goes. Next, Ultramarine Finest. Ooh, that's a hefty title. <laughs> Ooh, that's a beautiful blue. Oh, crap. Okay, never mind. These colors are so pigmented that if I briefly wash my brush, you know, just briefly touch it and move on, it won't wash. <laughs> really need to get in there and wash it. Ooh, okay, there's my indigo of sorts. And over here, they call it dark blue. Yeah, this is the closest thing to indigo. Look at that. I just love it, guys. Gray blues are my stuff. I love them, love them, love them. Prussian blue comes next. You can never mix, you can never miss with Prussian blue. Prussian blues are usually very, very gorgeous. So, cobalt azure. Azure? Azure? I don't know how you want me to say it. Oh god, I'm just making a mess. Phalo blue. Ooh, I like this one. But I think I will like the next ones even better. Helio Cerulean. Ooh, guys, look at these. Guys, look at these blues. They're gorgeous. Look at that. Wow. And you know, the two I thought I would love the most haven't even come up. Here they go. Helio Turquoise. Look at that. Very opaque. Not gonna lie. Extremely opaque. Very happy with it. Oh, look at that. This is next. Also, very opaque. But gorgeous nonetheless. Yeah. Look at that. Now, I apologize because I'm going to have to go with cobalt turquoise over here because I kind of forgot about it. That's a green, actually. Okay. I'll have to check if I didn't mess this up, but I think I did this right. So, phalo green is next. forgot about it when I was naming these but um, I did not expect cobalt turquoise to be green though. Viridian. These are really similar. Helio green. Okay. This is what you would call I think a hooker green. 
by most sets. I have a couple of those. Cobalt, green, dark. This is a mossy tone, I like it. Yeah, I like it very much. Permanent green, olive. Well, yeah, this one is much different from what I expected. Olive green is usually a much drier green. Hmm. Not what I expected. Sorry, that's my dog going away. He's bored with hearing me talk about colors. <laughs> Chromium oxide green. We're almost done with the greens. That's a color I don't own as well. This is more of an olive green for me actually, but yeah. They clearly made a distinction. So now green amber. And he's back. Green amber is a brown. Totally a brown. Burnt amber. Now starts with the browns. There are so many browns. Yellow ochre. Ooh, that is way too much. This one just activates too easy. Don't expect to see that line once it dries. Transparent ochre, okay. It's kind of a dark one. Oh, not easy to activate, I see. Yeah. So yeah, the transparent ochre is more like what I'm used to. Brutile yellow. Another very opaque color. Very, very opaque color. So, titanium gold ochre. Lots of ochres in this one. Ooh. This one. Transparent sienna. Ooh, this one activated really nicely. Oh, look at that. That's a gorgeous color. I like that. English Venetian Red. I like these rusty colors. Mahogany Brown. Last row, guys. Oh, look at that. It's like a red chocolate. It's just nice, really earthy tone. Ivory black. Mm. Hematite black. Yeah, I don't think this will go dark. Either. green. <laughs> Let's see how green this is. Oh, it's green. Oh, okay. It is green. Oh, I love this one. Why wasn't it sitting with the greens though? It looks black, but not, not really black. It's green. I mean, come on. This is clearly green. This is clearly a lovely green. Lamp black. Okay. This is almost blue black. Well, what do you know? I'm liking the backs. Did not expect it at all. <laughs> Thought it was a waste of space, but each one is really interesting. Really, really interesting. Okay. Titanium opaque white. So it's opaque. Silver. Let's see. Metallic colors aren't usually very easy to activate. Mm, it's kind of white, really. Yeah, this is metallic white. Now the gold. And now this brilliant opera rose, which doesn't look 
to be metallic in the slightest so I have no idea what's doing here look at that okay guys we have swatched and I am loving these black lines shining through even the opaque ones are kind of surprising me because they're showing through even more as they dry uh, all there's left to do is to paint a little bit and have some fun <laughs> I have where is it ah, here it is I have I have this little water lily right here that I think will be perfect to try these watercolors on. You have the softness and the subtlety of the flower and then the punch of the colors of the pads, you know, with the greens and the yellows and the browns and the purples. And we have so many lovely colors to try. Love it, let's go. So as I was preparing to paint, a little accident happened here. Yeah, this, I, the pan just got up fell on top of the other, they glued together, Pfft, this isn't going to cut it. I got paint all over my fingers, I'll definitely have to find a better way to store these to keep this from happening. This is very bad. Okay. <laughs>
And there we have it, our beautiful water lilies with so much color, so much shading. Oh, I can tell you right now, I'm going to have so much fun with these blues. I can't wait to keep trying them and keep getting to know them a little bit better. As for our swatches, here they are. Oh, crap. Like I said, really need to sort, really need to sort this out. Some metallic, one fluorescent, a lot of surprising uh, blacks, some grays, lots of yellows. Yeah, a little bit of everything. You can see those lines are pretty visible except for these which are a little bit more opaque but other than that you know they're gorgeous gorgeous vibrant colors lots of pigment nothing to say about that what else can i say about these they're really sticky they don't dry easily which is a good thing i think you don't have to keep activating in them but at the same time you know if anything touches these paints you know a pencil or my hand and if they get glued to one another it's chaos okay the paints are just going to mix so yeah, I really need a different solution for, for these paints because this little tiny paper box just isn't going to cut it, okay? I need something to grab hold of my paints and keep it that way. I don't want like, for example, I put my, my pencil and if it's not wet enough, it will just bring the pen along and then the pen will fall on top of another or on top, on top of anything really and it will stick. It really will stick and leave a lot of paint. So it's a waste of paint. It can ruin um, your drawing. Uh, it can ruin another paint. I need a different solution, that's for sure. Apart from that, I am definitely still a Schmincke girl. <laughs> These are the most beautiful watercolors I've ever seen. Uh, and I cannot wait, cannot wait to see what I'll do with them. <laughs> and that's it, you guys. Our review is complete and I'm just in love. There's really no other word for it. You know, these paints just make me want to paint all day, every day, you know, to go beyond everything I've done so far and just really get really, really good at watercolors just to be able to do them justice. <laughs> Uh, here's my water lily. I'm pretty happy with it. They are, like I said, really subtle flowers, really punchy colors in the pads. Everything I could ask for and a little bit more. <laughs> so yeah, my verdict is definitely positive and I suggest you give them a try if you can. But like I said, you do not need the 54 set, okay? A 12, 18, 24 set tops will be more than enough. Thank you for doing this with me. I clearly had a blast. I hope you did too and I will see you very, very soon. Bye-bye.